Howdy folks, this is part five of the Looking Back at Past Planes series and moving on to more scratch builds. Uh, the next on the list of scratch builds was uh, a big 1.8 metre wingspan twin boom um, light wind sloper was what I was trying to, uh, to build. I'd taken the radian out for some slope soaring and um, that was just amazing as a sloper but because it, hasn't, it doesn't have any ailerons it's almost too good as a sloper doesn't have ailerons um, so you can't dial in brakes or spoilerons to get it to land and, and I found landing the radiant on a difficult slope was very very difficult. Just incredible slope saw though. So I thought I'd try and make a light wind slope saw similar to the radiant and uh, I came up with this 1.8 meter twin boom slope saw. And to be honest it was a bit of a disappointment. Uh, it was nowhere near as good a, a glider as the Phoenix or the Radian. Uh, it, it was okay but I think the materials I was using, it was just too flexible. Uh, the wings would flex, the tail would flex. I had to redesign it a couple of times. Uh, what I came up with eventually was uh, a 1.6 or 1.7 metre wingspan FPV cruiser by putting a, a, a motor on it. Uh, and that was just like a, a big spectre really. It was quite, quite good. But um, it exhibited an interesting problem that I've seen with these pusher style plane, especially the twin boom, the Spectre and the, the um, FPV Cruiser, in that if you get into difficulty flying slowly and you stall it then you try and power out of it, the prop sort of cavitates or something like that, it, um, it's like the prop blades are stalling and they're not just making a lot of noise chopping through the, the air and not providing the thrust that, that you previously had with it. So that was an interesting problem. And also with the Depron Spectre, I noticed that it had a little bit of yaw waggle as well. And I think because of the short um, tail boom length, maybe the rudders weren't effective enough at keeping it in a straight line. It would sort of, every now and then, it would just waggle, waggle, waggle. So that was interesting. Now, moving on to the next design, and again with the drive to try and make a light wind slope saurer, um, I borrowed from DLG Designs, Discus Launch glider designs and tried to make a, a really really lightweight slope saw that looked like a discus launch glider using the uh, spring pull system for rudder and elevator and ailerons as well and that's based on a, on a pod an arrow shaft boom and lightweight depron tail surfaces and that was absolutely fantastic that was one of my best designs I think it worked superbly well in really really light winds now it turned out to be very very aerobatic which is exactly what I wanted um, so it was very, very good practice for uh, learning how to f do aerobatics with the La Fiche, which uh, is a, a long, steep learning curve. Started making pods from uh, balsa and, and covering with uh, tape. And then I came across uh, on RC Group the thread on the Fusion uh, acrobatic slope sawer. Uh, and I'll put a link to the, the, in the notes to that. So a chap who calls himself Leadfeather designed this um, super aerobatic, super lightweight and super, super manoeuvrable uh, slope saw that he called the Fusion. Uh, and again, it has the mad stab and uh, the, I've got the spring pull system as well, which is a, a pull line and a spring in the tail. Uh, and it's got 90 degrees up and 90 degrees down, almost 90 degrees down. And this is a brilliant plane. Uh, there's plans on RC groups in the thread. If you want to build one, have a go at it. It's just fantastic. And also staying along that theme, uh, here's a heavy wind slope. So I had a, a run of really, really strong winds in, in my area and I didn't have anything that could handle the really, really heavy, heavy wind. So I set about designing this or adapting it from my uh, ultralight slope saw actually. It's a balsa pod covered with uh, reinforced tape squishy foam nose cone. It's got double arrow shaft for extra strength, balsa tail surfaces, only elevator, no rudder. And uh, I can load this up to 500 grams or heavier by putting a, a 1300 or a 2200 milliamp hour battery in there and that's a speed demon. Uh, it's brilliant, can handle these strong winds really, really well. So then another Christmas went past and my wife had bought me some uh, flight test kits just for the fun of it. Uh, so there was the mini old speedster and the mini scout and a, a full size old speedster as well. So although they're fun, easy to build, uh, I'm not a super big fan of the flight test planes. Um, they are, especially around the uh, elevator, they're always way too weak for my liking. 
anyway, they're good fun. So then the next plane uh, in the lineup was the 1.2 metre Acrobat plane and started using a different technique for building the fuselage instead of just what I'd been doing so far, which was basically making a, a fuselage out of a, a tube like experimental airlines. I decided to sort of come up with a bit of a, a shaped fuselage and, and what I did was I'd draw the side wall, cut that out and then just box it in top and bottom uh, to make the fuselage shape. And with this I could have a, um, a vertical stabiliser as part of the fuselage with a nice big rudder uh, to realise this acrobatic design. And I also had a, a full flying horizontal stabiliser with this one, carbon fibre rod going through a pivot. And that was fantastic for aerobatics. Great little plane, had a lot of fun with that one. And I've only just recently uh, got rid of that one uh, just because I needed more space in my plane rack. So about this time um, I saw David Vinderstahl's um, tricopter design and I saw his build video and I thought that looks easy enough and I thought it was about time I tried my hand at um, mucking around with flight control boards and things like that. So I built myself a RC Explorer style tricopter from plywood and timber using motors that I already had and yeah it was quite interesting. I, I enjoyed that uh, experience uh, and then I ordered some bits and pieces from David Vinderstahl, including his uh, lovely tricopter body and his gorgeous square carbon fibre uh, arms too. I just love those arms. A few different versions of the tricopter and I also tried a, a quad, but I discovered that I'm just not a big fan of multi-rotors. Um, I'm all about the glide, I'm all about the airfoil, the, the wing. The wing is what does it for me. Uh, the noise and, and fury of, of quads, motors and ESCs and having to replace props, it just, just didn't grab me the way that planes have, have really uh, grabbed my imagination. And I sort of made a conscious, conscious decision that I, I wouldn't pursue quads or multi-rotors uh, for the moment. Um, I not enough space in my brain to, to pursue planes and quads. So right about this time, uh, I was contacted by Gearbest asking if I'd like to do a review of a, a little toy quad. and I can't say no to free stuff, so I said yes, bring it on. So they sent the 007 Spy Quad and I did a little bit of a review on it and that was fine. And then uh, uh, also got contact by Geek Buying and they asked me to do a review of uh, the tiny little D1 drone. And again, that was fine, did the review, but I didn't enjoy it at all. They're both fine products uh, if you're into that sort of thing, but uh, it's obvious that I'm just not into quads at all. I've since removed those reviews from, from my YouTube channel because I just felt so bad about, uh, I felt like I was selling myself out. Uh, I got over that, of course, as, you, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, but yes, I didn't like doing the review of the, the little toy quads and it's something I've told all, all the companies that have uh, contacted me to do reviews. I've said, I won't do review reviews of quads, only planes and cameras and FPV gear. So that's good, that sort of freed me up from having to deal with all those horrible little toy quads and things. I'll leave that for other people. Okay, so it's about this time that I uh, decided to have a go at hot wire cutting of foam. And I'm sure you can see over in the back there the big slabs of yellow foam. That's the XPS foam that I use and my bows and my uh, power supply are just here. I find hot wire cutting just wonderful. I love it. It's like a zen experience for me. Um, I just love the slow uh, cutting action. I love the results, the beautiful airfoils, and uh, I'm just sold on hot wire cutting now. I, I don't do any Depron folding for, for wings anymore. I still use Depron for fuselages and things like that. Everything was hot wire cut from then on. And because I'd, I'd worked out the different method of making the fuselages using the uh, 1.2 meter Acrobat, I decided to have a go at making uh, a scale tiger moth. Uh, because my wife and I have been up in tiger moths and done aerobatics and things like that, which was just a sensational experience. I really want to do it again. Um, the tiger moth has been one of my favourite planes ever since, so I decided to have a go at making a tiger moth using the hot wire cutting methods and using the uh, sort of shaped fuselage sides. And it's, it's a very interesting experience. It's, um, I started off sort of scale size and I found that uh, I just couldn't get the CG forward enough. Uh, so I had to keep extending the nose and moving the wheels further and further forward and strengthening the bottom where the, the, the uh, landing gear uh, joins into. So I sort of learned some new techniques about how to, to design scale-ish kinds of planes. Uh, and this 
Tiger Moth is still one of my favourite planes. It, it's just a real worker horse. It flies beautifully. Great camera. Uh, great for FPV. Uh, definitely one of my favourite planes. So then, the next plane I decided to build was the Fokker DR1, which is another um, awesome, awesome looking plane. Kind of doesn't fly very well. Uh, it seems to kick into tail heavy somehow. It's like one of the wings is stalling and it kicks into to being tail heavy um, and ends up sort of knife edging or flying with the tail dropping down. But anyway, it's a fantastic looking plane and I still enjoy flying it. Still haven't perfected it um, and it's not super scale, but still a good fun plane. So I had the biplane, the triplane, now I needed a, a retro monoplane. So I went with another de Havilland uh, design because they look really, really nice, I think. Built a single wing uh, de Havilland Hummingbird. Yeah, so that's just a lovely, simple, uh, smooth little plane to fly. But of the three retro planes that I've built, I still like the Tiger Moth the best. Next up, um, I wanted to try and build a really, really easy to fly trainer plane. Uh, it had to be super tough because trainer planes are going to crash a lot. It had to be uh, just three channel, very light, uh, easy to fly. So I came up with this single boom pusher uh, three channel plane with a really big soft nose cone that has the battery and everything. Uh, and they turned out to be very, very nice. Um, I built probably three of them. I don't have any of them left because I've given them all away. Anyway, so the, the scratch builds around this time are all about uh, hot wire cutting. Uh, so I thought I would try a small uh, FPV wing uh, that could be used for ripping around, you know, close proximity FPV. Um, so I, I designed this uh, sip kill wing. It's about, it was about a, a one meter wingspan, I think. Once it got flying, it flew beautifully, but it had this wicked stall tendency. If you um, tried to loop it downwind and it stalled, it was just unrecoverable. It would just spiral into the ground. No recovery possible. A friend of mine, Chris, decided he wanted to try some uh, wing combat. Um, and he built himself a, a flight test mini arrow from Depron. And I had my sip kill wing, so we decided to have a bit of a battle. And his flight test mini arrow was just so outperformed my sip kill wing that uh, I decided, okay, let's build a, uh, a hot wire cut uh, flight test mini arrow. And I did, and it was very successful, great little plane. I've since uh, cut some wings from my friends, and so we've got about four or five of them. Uh, we've had a few combats uh, uh, chasing streamers and things like that. It's awesome fun, awesome fun. Good way to destroy your uh, 1300 batteries because they, end up, they all come back puffed out because <laughs> you forget about uh, uh, taking care of them. Anyway, the flight test mini arrow hot wire cut is a ripper. It's a ripper plane anyway. I, I would highly recommend if, you, if you're after a little wing, the flight test mini arrow is a ripper. So now finally we get to the Wing Wing Z84. And it didn't look like this originally, of course. This is my own uh, outrageous design <laughs> for good visibility and to differentiate from other people's Wing Wing Z84s. So this came from uh, Gearbest and I thought I wouldn't hear from them again after the little quad review but they contacted me again and, and asked if I'd like to review uh, this little Wing Wing Z84 and oh, I was a bit um, reticent about it to start off with I thought oh, probably going to send me a crappy little wing and how am I going to review it if I don't like it but I needn't have worried because this is an awesome awesome little wing it's uh, it's super slick aerodynamically. You can see there's hardly any fuselage, all nice, beautiful, sexy, smooth curves. I really, really like this shape. And it's so fast. It is ridiculously fast. It's way faster than anything else I'd flown, uh, even on 2S, which is what it comes with. And on 3S, it goes ballistic, and some people even try it on 4S, which is outrageous. If you're going to go flat out with this little wing, you do need to make sure the, the motor mount is um, glued in securely. Uh, as you'll see in the video, mine flew off when I was doing a high speed run in front of all my mates. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. But it survived that, even though it fell apart into pieces, uh, just had to gather all the pieces and glue it back together. Tape that down so that it doesn't pop up. 
because at high speed there's a lot of aerodynamic lift on the canopy and it'll suck it out of the plane. This was the first plane I reviewed and it was the start of many, many more to come. In the next episode, I'll talk about uh, the Hobby King Cloud Surfer, which I bought myself, and the Volantex Mini Ranger, or 757-4, also from Gearbest, which wasn't very good, but uh, came up with a few mods to make it a lot better. Uh, the Volantex Raptor, and maybe the Dynam Hawk Sky. Thanks for watching.